राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गोर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो नित गोर हरि भो जय जय प्रभु पार प्रभु पार प्रभु जय शिव प्रभु गोर प्रेमानंदे हरिभो नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चिदेश ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा भगवते वसुदेवा सो टुडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग वसंत पंचमी ओदो एक्चुअली द एक्चुअल डे ऑफ वसंत पंचमी वाज ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स व्हिच वाज थर्सडे बट वी आर हैविंग इट टुडे सो दैट एवरीवन कैन बी हियर एंड कैन आल्सो सी हाउ Vasant Panchami is observed. It's a a very big festival in the Holy Dam in Mayapur. Maybe you've seen the pictures there of the deities on the day of Vasant Panchami. How the whole altar will just be yellow. A wonderful uh decoration. So here also the today the devotees have gone to great lands to introduce this ceremony here 
This is the first time the ceremony is being observed here in Kuala Lumpur. And we hope every year we will observe this day. So Vasant mean the spring it's actually Vasant Panchami is considered the beginning of spring. We come through the mag, the winter, the cold winter, and now coming into spring. And so the flowers begin to bloom. And the farmers also get ready, you know, in countries where it's uh, been cold and very, got maybe the ground very hard. The farmers get ready to go back to work, back into the fields. The winter is over and spring is beginning and they go off into the back to work in the fields. And so this is the, the significance of the Vasant Panchami, coming on the fifth day of the waxing moon. Panchami, the fifth day of the waxing moon. So it's celebrated in big style in temples and traditionally they will decorate the deities in the yellow color. Yellow, of course, is more symbolic to the mode of goodness. Red is more the mode of passion and the dark colors are more the mode of ignorance. But the yellow signifies more the mode of goodness. So this is a basic principle behind this Vasant Panchami. And it's also the day in which a number of very important acharyas appeared and even some disappeared on this particular day. So we're going to speak about the different devotees who departed from this world. First of all, Vasant Panchami is also the day of Saraswati Puja. So those of you who are students, especially those in performing arts, they will worship the goddess Saraswati. And students traditionally worship goddess Saraswati. Of course, we know there was a famous pastime where a great devotee of the goddess Saraswati, uh, Keshava Kashmiri, how he met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is described in great detail in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Keshava Kashmiri was a, he was Digvijay. The title Digvijay means that he's conquered everywhere. Wherever he went, he would challenge people to debates and he was always victorious. But he came to Navadweep. So this Kesh of Kashmiri, he was a great devotee of the goddess Saraswati. But when he came to Navadweep, all of the pundits, they were very afraid when they heard that he was coming into Navadweep. All the pandas made excuses to go, say, oh no, I have to go home, I have to, I have to go and see my parents or something. They all ran away. They didn't want to meet Keshav Kashmiri because they thought, if I have to meet him and if he debates with me and defeats me, then I'll be ruined and I'll never get any more students. And so in this way they all disappeared except for Nimai Pandit. And Nimai Pandit was there teaching his students on the bank of the Ganga. And it was on the banks of the Ganga that Keshava Kashmiri met with Nimai Pandit. And somehow Keshava Kashmiri had heard of Nimai Pandit. And I said, yeah. he said, yes, I hear you're a, a scholar, a pundit in logic and so on. At this time, Nimai was only a teenage boy. He was just a youth, but he had already opened his own school and had his own students. So Keshava Kashmiri requested Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to say something about Mother Ganga, which was just at the side where they were. 
So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Keshava Kashmiri, you please say something. Let me hear you recite some poetry. And so Keshava Kashmiri immediately began to recite poetry just like the blowing wind. You know, usually if you have to recite poetry, you have to think carefully and, you know, it's not a very easy thing to get the words to rhyme and so on. So in Sanskrit poetry there are many rules of grammar and many different principles to be observed. So this Keshava Kashmiri, he was such a scholar, he was so learned that he could recite poetry like the blowing wind. And spontaneously he composed many verses glorifying Mother Ganga. But when he finished reciting, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first of all congratulated him and said, yes, very nice. But he said, can you explain the mistakes, the faults which are there in your poetry? And Keshava Kashmiri was shocked. He had never heard anybody ever say there was any fault in anything he said. So Nimai Pandit was required to explain the faults which were, which were there in the poetry. And Nimai Pandit took one of the verses and recited it to Keshava Kashmiri. Keshava Kashmiri was amazed because he had recited many verses, like the wind, but somehow Nimai Pandit had memorized the verses, analyzed the verses, and found, found out what was wrong with the verses. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Keshava Kashmiri, he said, just as you have the ability to recite poetry so quickly, some people have the ability to remember things very easily, right? We know that sometimes some people, they hear, they can remember very easily. Most of us, we hear a hundred times and still we never remember. Anyway, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Nimai Pandit, Nimai Pandit explained the the faults in the poetry of Keshava Kashmiri. And at the same time he praised him that although there are faults, there are also embellishments there, there are some good qualities, and he explained the good points as well as the faults. So Nimai Pandit's students were laughing at Keshava Kashmiri, but Nimai Pandit told them, no, no, don't laugh. He's a, he's a great pundit, he's a great scholar. So Nimai Pandit taught the, his students to give proper respect to Keshav Kashmiri. So that way Keshava Kashmiri retired for the night and he wondered what had happened because usually he was always blessed by the goddess Saraswati. But that night the goddess Saraswati appeared to him Keshava Kashmiri was apologizing. He said, have I offended you in some way? I must have made some offense that I was defeated by this young man. A young man defeated me. How is it possible he could defeat me? I'm, I'm your great devotee. Have I offended you in some way that you didn't bless me with the knowledge to, to defeat him? And Mother Saraswati then explained to Keshava Kashmiri that you have to understand that young man is no ordinary young man, but he is my worshipful Lord and Master. So the next morning Keshava Kashmiri came to Nimai Pandit and he offered his obeisances and he respected Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And later on, Keshava Kashmiri went off and became a Vaishnava, and he gave up all of this scholarship. So that's one pastime which we have in our 
Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy in relation to the goddess Saraswati. Today, Vasant Panchami being the day of Saraswati Puja. And it's also the, it's, it's the appearance day of a number of very important uh, people in our line of disciplic succession. First of all, we'll speak about uh, Pundarik Vijanidi. Pundarik Vijanidi actually comes from what is now Bangladesh. And if any of you get the chance to go to Bangladesh, you can go to a place called Pundarik Dam. Pundarik was a landowner. He had a big estate. He was a wealthy person. And it happened that uh, one day Makunda, Makunda, who was a great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said to Gadarhar Pandit, he said, a great devotee has come to Mayapur. You must go and meet him. He's a great devotee. His name is Pundarik. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would often address Pundarik by saying, my father, my father. So, Pundarik Mijanidi was uh, a wealthy person and Gadarhar, he was a brahmachari and very renounced. So, Gadarhar went to see this Pundarik Vijanidi, but when he came into the assembly where Pundarik Vijanidi was sitting, he saw Pundarik Vijanidi sitting. First of all, he was on a very good asana, and he had people surrounding him with peacock fans and chamaras. Maybe some of his servants were there. And he was sitting with a table in front of him and the table was full with all kinds of soft drinks like sherbets and many different refreshing drinks. And then there were numpkins and savouries all there in front of him. And Pundarik Vijanidi was dressed in very fine clothing and he had nice hair. His hair was also well groomed and he had many jewelries. He was wearing rings on all the fingers and he had also some necklaces around him. So Gadarhar Pandit came there and saw him and he thought, how could he be a great devotee? He looks like a materialist. So this was Gadarhar's his opinion. He thought, I don't think he could be a really good devotee. But Makunda was with him. And Makunda understood the doubt which had entered into the mind of Gadarhar Pandit. So Makunda recited a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. He recited a beautiful verse about who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna. Aho bhakiyam stanakala kutam jagam sayapayanad apiyasadvi. Like this, this verse occurs in the uh, third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, where Uddhava is describing about Lord Krishna to Vidura. And he's describing who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna. That this witch Putana came with poison on her breast, Kalakala Kutam. The poison was on her breast and she wants to feed it to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna accepts her as his devotee and takes her to the spiritual world to be his nurse in, the spirit, in Goloka. So who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna? So Makunda, 
who was famous for singing very sweetly, he recited this verse. And when Pundarik Vijanidi heard this verse, immediately his ecstatic love for Krishna awakened. And he fell off his seat and he rolled on the floor crying and crying incessantly. Tears came from his eyes, flooded the floor. And he rolled over and over again and again, crying in ecstasy for the Lord. So he, Pundarik Vichinini did this for a very long time. And Gadarhar witnessed all this and Gadarhar was shocked and he understood, oh, he is really a very great devotee. So Gadarhar went away and he contemplated the situation. He thought about what had happened and he thought, what have I done? He thought, oh, I've committed an offence against him. He's a great devotee and I've offended him. So Gadarhar considered that the proper thing to do, he said, I should, sub I should surrender to him and I will re request him to initiate me. I will have, take him as my spiritual master. So Gadarhar went to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he requested him, he said, I want to take initiation from Pundarik Vijanidi. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Yes, very good, go and do it. So Pundarik, uh, Gadarhar went to Pundarik Vijanidi and he fell at the feet of Pundarik Vijanidi and requested him to give him initiation. So Pundarik Vijanidi said, All right, yes, yes, you can be initiated. So they waited for a suitable day, an auspicious day, and on the auspicious day, Pundarik initiated Gadarhar Pandit, became the spiritual master. Now later on, there was an incident in Jagannath Puri. Somehow Gadarhar had lost his mantra, which had been given to him by his guru. He had given the mantra to some unqualified person and Gadar had, had lost the mantra. So he wanted to get the mantra again. So he came to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, you have to take from your spiritual master. Pundarik is your spiritual master. But Gadarhar said, this took, took place in Jagannath Puri because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, went to Puri. Gadarhar also went to Puri, followed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they were all living there in Puri. And Gadarhar approached Lord Chaitanya and asked him, can you reinitiate me, give me the mantra again? But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, you'll get it from your guru. He said, well, my guru is not here. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, but he's coming here. When he comes here, you can get the mantra from him. And it, so Pundari came there, it actually happened. He came there and uh, Pundari again reinitiated Gadahar, gave him the mantra. Another nice pastime which took place con concerns Pundari Vijanidi was what happened when he was in Jagannath Puri that he saw the pundits doing the puja and there's a particular ceremony when the winter begins. You know in India they have winter, here in Malaysia you don't have that experience, do you? You don't have a winter season here really. It's always either hot or wet. <laughs> so. Jagannath Puri, Jagannath Puri, it's a mild winter, of course, not as cold as in Mayapur or Vrindavan. But they do have some kind of winter there. 
And the custom is they will give Lord Jagannath a warmer cloth to wear at that time. What's the ceremony called? Uttana something? Uh? Huh? Uh, Odan Sashtin. Odan Okay. Yes, yeah, so, they, they, so they, they, they gave the cloth to Jagannath, but Pundarik Vijanidi noticed that the cloth was starched. Now when you purchase new cloth, it has some starch in it. And Pundarik Vijanidi noticed that cloth had starch in it. So he thought that should not have been offered to the deities. He actually thought, this is not good. They should not offer this kind of cloth to the deities. So he was thinking like that. So that night in his dream, Lord Jagannath came to Pundarik Vijanidi and slapped him again and again. He slapped his cheeks. He said, you offender. You, you criticize my devotees, you criticize my priests, my pujaris, my servants. How dare you? And in the morning when Pundarik Vijaniri woke up, his whole face was all swollen, all red from the beating of Lord Jagannath. So Pundarik Vijaniri considered himself very fortunate that Lord Jagannath personally came to chastise him for his offense in worshipping the deities. So those of you who are worshipping Lord Jagannath, if you wake, wake up with a swollen face one day, you better think what you've done wrong. So this was some pastimes in relation to Pundarik Vijanidi. Another personality who appears to, on Vasant Panchami is a person called Raghunandan Das Thakur. Raghunandan Das Thakur is a, a very saintly devotee. He was born in a family of devotees. His father was Mukunda and his uncle was Narahari. And they all lived together in a place called Sri Racha. Sri Racha is near to Katwa. Katwa is where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. And it's not very far away from Mayapur. You can get a train from Navadvip to Katwa. It doesn't take very long, maybe less than an hour. You can go there. And you can see the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. You can see the samadhi of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's hair. And Katwa is where the ashram of uh, Keshava Bharati is. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sannyas guru was Keshava Bharati. So his ashram was there at Katwa. And near to Katwa is this place, Sri Racha. It's only a couple of kilometers, practically walking distance from the birth, from the samadhi, from the sannyasi place of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Raghunanda and Dastakur, his family all lived there in Sri Racha. And if you go there today, you can see the deities which are there, all the deities which were well, actually, there's many new deities come there because Raghunanda and Das, he was living there. But in the course of time, different people would bring deities and they'd say, here, take my deity. I can't keep doing the worship. Take my deity. And this way, they accumulated many deities. But it's a very nice temple, Sri Racha, Raghunanda and Das Thakur's temple. And the the very wonderful pastime which took place concerning Raghunandan is that when he was a young boy, his father had asked him to make the offering to the deity. The father said, I have to go away tomorrow and you have to make the offering. Now this deity has been in our family for a long time and every day we have to make the offering. So tomorrow I want you to make the offering on my behalf. So Raghunandan said, yes, father, I will do it. 
So the next morning, Rag, uh, Raghunan, uh, the father Makunda left, and Raghunandan was left. And when it came time for the offering, he got the prasadam ready, and he went and he made the offering. And when you make the offering, you ring the bell and recite the prayers, asking Krishna to come and eat. So he was ringing the bell, but he was not satisfied because he saw Krishna's not eating. So he began to plead to the deity and he asked Krishna, Krishna, please take sada. Krishna, please, please. I'm offering to you, you have to eat. If you don't eat, father will be not pleased, father will be angry. He asked me to make the offering, you have to eat. And so he was, so he was pleading so much to the deity that Krishna actually ate the offering. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai. So Krishna at the offering. So that night, father came home and so he asked Raghunandan, did you make the offering, Raghunandan? Yes, father. So the father said, can you bring me some prasad? And Raghunandan said, there's, there's no prasad. My father said, oh, you've eaten everything? He said, no, father, deity and everything. So father was surprised. He thought, my son does not tell lies. He's very well behaved. What is happening? And so he was very curious to know. So anyway, he told his son, he said, oh, very good. And he said, I think tomorrow you have to make the offering again. So the next morning, Raghunandan again went to make the offering and this time the father was watching, observing secretly. He was hiding and he saw Raghunandan ring the, and he began to plead to Krishna, Krishna, please come, take, 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 take the offering, please eat. And he saw Krishna actually start to eat and then Makunda was so happy, so me. He could not restrain himself and he just cried out. He was so pleased, so proud that his son was such a wonderful devotee that he could coerce Lord Krishna to come and eat. So Raghunanda got this reputation that, you know, he's able to get Krishna to eat. Of course, when Krishna saw that the father was watching, they didn't eat anymore. But uh, late after that, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met with them because uh, the devotees would all go to Jagannath Puri for Rathiyatra. And the different villages, they would all go. Just like in Mayapur, some people come from Malaysia, some people come from South India, some people come from Hong Kong, some people come from Russia. So in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the devotees would come. Some would come from Shantipur, some would come from Mayapur, some would come from Katwa, and some would come from Sri Racha. So the devotees from Sri Racha came and they met with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And before they would leave, they would all come and say goodbye to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they would ask, is there any instructions? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he met with Raghunandan and his father Makunda and the uncle Narahari, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave them instructions. And he told Makunda that you're a physician, so you keep working. Sometimes people have jobs, they think I should give up my job, I should just be full-time devotee. But Lord Chaitanya told Makunda, he said, you're a physician, you work, and at the same time you can maintain the family, and at the same time, you do your devotional practice. And he told Narahari, 
that you go with the devotees, you go for preaching. And he told Raghunandan, your service is with the deity. You stay with the deity and serve the deity. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave different instructions for different people. It's not the same for everyone. For different people, according to their nature, people are engaged in different ways. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recognized people's differences and could engage them accordingly. So today is the, the appearance day of Raghunandan Das Thakur, who was such a wonderful devotee that he could induce the deity to eat the offering. And then today is also the appearance day of Vishnu Priya. Vishnu Priya was the wife of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu before he took sannyas. She was the consort of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Vishnu Priya, she was a young woman married to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at the age of 24, he became renounced sannyasi. At that time his wife was only 16 years of age. So she became a widow. When the husband takes sannyas, then the wife becomes a widow. So Vishnu Priya became a widow at the age of 16. And she was left with the elderly mother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sachimata. So Vishnu Priya was very renounced lady and it is said that she would only eat as many grains of rice as she chanted rounds on her japa beats. Every day she would sit and chant japa and for every round she would move one grain and she would only cook that much grains as she chanted rounds. In this way she, she was renounced and she was also worshipping faithfully her husband in the deity form. Now previously in the times of Lord Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra had lost his wife. He'd been separated from Mother Sita. Lord Ramachandra asked Mother Sita to go to the ashram of Valmiki and she was living there and after some time after she delivered her twin sons, Love and Kush, then Mother Sita returned to the earth. She disappeared from the world. And Lord Ramachandra was left as a king, but he had no wife. But he had made a vow only to accept one wife. So whenever he did a yagya, it's customary the king should sit with his wife at his side. So he, Lord Ramachandra, his wife was not present, so he had a deity of Mother Sita. And his deity of Sita was there with him whenever he would do the yagya. So in the times of Lord Rama, you see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, non different from Lord Ramachandra, and Vishnu Priya, non different from Mother Sita. So Chaitanya Mah Lord Ramachandra was with his wife in the form of the deity. But now in the Kali Yuga, Vishnu Priya has no husband, but her husband is there in the deity form. And she was worshipping her husband, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the form of the deity. Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. They say Dameshwar Mahaprabhu is the deity worshipped by Vishnu Priya. So today is also the appearance day of Raghunandan Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami is a very 
great devotee, one of the six Goswamis. All right? Jai Sri Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raghunath, Sri Jiva Gopal Bhatta Dasa Raghunath. So Dasa Raghunath, Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das was born in a very wealthy family. His father and his uncle were very wealthy. They were maintaining all of the brahmanas in Bengal. Means they had so much money, they were giving charity to all of the brahmanas in Bengal. So Raghunath Das was born into that family of great opulence. But Raghunath Das actually was very attracted to go to be with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So much so that he would run away from home to go to go to be with Lord Chaitanya. And his father would have to send men to go and catch him and bring him back. And regularly it happened that Raghunath Das ran away from home. His father would send the men, go and catch him, bring him back. So they were thinking what to do to keep our son fixed. They were thinking to tie him up, tie him in chains. But father said, he has more wealth than Kuvera, the treasurer of the demigods. And he has a wife who is more beautiful than the goddess of fortune. So if those things can keep him here, what good will chains be? What good will ropes ever be to keep him a prisoner? So it happened that Raghunath Das went to, ch to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally. And he requested Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that I want to come and join you. I want to be with you and where you go. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, don't be a sahajya. Don't act in such a cheap manner. Go home and behave like a normal person. And in course of time, if you are keeping Krishna in your heart, in course of time, you will be freed from your situation. So it's instructive that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not immediately accept Raghunath Das Goswami. This example is sometimes given that you go directly to Krishna, Krishna won't accept you. You want to go to Krishna, you have to go through Krishna's devotees. So when Raghunath Das went to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, just go home and behave like a normal person. Don't be a sahajya. The sahajyas mean they take everything very cheaply. Now, of course, Raghunath Das was coming from a family of great opulence and great wealth, and he was accustomed to luxuries. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not immediately encourage him to renounce everything. But he told him, go home and just behave normally and gradually in time you will get freed from this situation. So in this way Raghunath went home and he spent his time, he behaved very nicely. He was very, his mother and father, father was very pleased with him that, oh my son has changed, he's doing so nicely now, he's helping so much in everything. He was very happy, he thought he's not running away from home anymore. So it came to pass after some time that Lord Nityananda came to Panihati. And when Raghunath Das, Raghunath das heard that Lord Nityananda had come with all of his associates to Panihati, Raghunath Das asked his father for permission that he could also go and offer some service to Lord Nityananda. 
So father gave his blessings because he thought my son is all right now. He's not running away from home. He's living with us. He's a normal person. And so he told his son, yes, all right, go. You go to Panihati and meet Lord Nityananda. So Raghunath went there to Panihati and then Lord Nityananda is there with all of his cowherd boys. All the associates are there. And they see Raghunath Das and they recognized him because Raghunath Das was from this such a wealthy family that everybody knew, oh that family, Haranya and Govardhan Majumda, oh they're the, oh and this is Raghunath, he's the son, oh. And so Lord Nityananda saw him and said, bring Raghunath here. He said, today I'm going to punish you. And so Raghunath was sitting in front of Lord Nityananda and Lord Nityananda said, yes, your punishment is to put on a feast. I want a feast for all the devotees. So Raghunath was very happy to make arrangements for the festival with Panihati. And this festival takes place during the very hot time of the year, very hot and humid. And those of you who have been staying much time in Bengal, you know when it's very hot and humid, people in Bengal, they will take, often they'll take the flat rice and dahi. That's what's easily available. There's not so many vegetables at that time of the year, but they have flat rice and dahi. So yogurt and flat rice and uh, bananas, of course, are always there in Bengal. Everywhere there's banana trees. I was, I was in a bus one time and <laughs> there were some American people and they were looking at this, is that a mango tree? <laughs> they, they didn't know what was a banana tree and what was a mango tree. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Some people don't know these things. Anyway, they got all, all the yogurt and all the flat rice and they washed the flat rice in the Ganga and then they mixed it with the yogurt and they had condensed milk also. And then they had bananas and mangoes because mangoes are in season at that time also. And in this way they had the nice festival of what they call shira dahi, flat rice is shira, and dahi means a yogurt. So they shira dahi mahotsava, and mixed with all different fruits, and very nice. And they offered everything to the Panchatattva, and they had a big kirtan, and Lord Nityananda danced, and Lord Chaitanya personally manifested himself in his avirbhav feature there in the pastimes of Raghunath Das with Lord Nityananda. So this, this is a very famous pastime which took place at Panihati and we have our ISKCON temple there now at Panihati by the mercy of Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. He purchased a temple there and we have a nice temple. If you can go, Panihati, not very far from Kalkara, just near Kalkara Airport, practically, and you can see the place where Lord Nityananda gave mercy to Raghunath Das, because Raghunath Das put on a big festival for all the devotees. They fed everyone, and the vendors would come from far away. They, would, they, they heard there's a festival going on, so they all came to sell their bananas and yogurt. And Raghunath would buy everything from everyone and distribute to everyone. Everyone was fed. Even the dogs were all fed. Everyone was happy. And Lord Nityananda was very pleased. And he placed his lotus feet on the head of Raghunath Das. And he blessed him that very soon you will be freed from the well of materialistic life. So Raghunath Das was very happy to get this blessing and he went home 
And it happened in, in course of time that he got the opportunity to run away. And he never went back again. <laughs> he got out. And when he got out, away from home, he got to Jagannath Puri. Lord Chaitanya told him, he said, you're very fortunate. He said, you had fallen in a hole where animals passed to. You were living in a hole where people passed to. Somehow you've gotten out, you've freed, you're very fortunate. And Lord Chaitanya gave special mercy to Raghunath. He gave Raghunath a stone from Govardhan Hill to worship. He gave him a Govardhan Shila and he gave him also Gunjamala. And he, he told Raghunath how to worship this Govardhan Shila. Lord Chaitanya had been given the Govardhan Shila and he kept it with him for several months. He was very, he put it on his head and put it in front of his eyes. After several months he called Raghunath and gave it to Raghunath. And uh, so Raghunath lived in Jagannath Puri for some time and then later on after Lord Chaitanya and Gadarhar disappeared, then he moved to Vrindavan and to Radhakund and he was living there at Radhakund and he developed Radhakund. So there's so many nice pastimes to tell but there's no time. So we have to stop. Five minutes? Oh, oh yeah? <laughs> okay. So Rasa Prayana Prabhupada has given us five minutes. So Raghunath Das, we said he went, he was going to go to Vrindavan, he was thinking because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has disappeared, Swarup Damodar also left, disappeared, and then also Gadarha Pandit also left the world. They'd all disappeared. Raghunath thought, what's the point to stay here? I should leave this world. I will go to Govardhan, I will jump off the Govardhan hill. But he got to Govardhan, he got to Vrindavan, and he met Rupa and Sanatan. And Rupa and Sanatan instructed him that, that this is not the Krishna conscious process, that you have to stay in the world and you have to continue the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to discover the pastimes of the Lord and to renovate the places, the holy places of pilgrimage. And so it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who had personally discovered Radha Kund and shown it to Rupa and Sanatan so at that time it was simply a rice field. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went into the middle of the rice field and took his bath there. And so all the devotees were surprised. But Lord Chaitanya told them, this is Radha Kund. You don't know, this is Radha Kund, this is the place. So they wanted, they should make a nice place to show the beauty, Radha Kund, Shama Kund. This must be available for the devotees. So Raghunath Das was living there at Radha Kund. But Raghunath Das had renounced all wealth. He had nothing. He would given up everything. And he was living there at Radha Kund and thinking how to develop this Radha Kund. And so it happened. One man, he was going to Badarik Ashram. And he, had, he was taking a lot of gold with him to Badarik Ashram to give the gold in charity in Badarik Ashram. But when he was on the way there, he had a dream. And in the dream, the Lord came to him and said, don't take this gold to Badarik Ashram. Go back to Vrindavan and give this gold to Raghunath Das. Raghunath Das needs this gold. And so the man, in the, following the dream, the instructions which he had in the dream, he came back down the Himalayas and he went to Vrindavan and he went asked around and then he found out who was Raghunath. And Raghunath, he was living there at Radha Kund. So he gave all the gold to, Radha, to Raghunath Das and Raghunath Das used that to make this beautiful Radha Kund, which we know today. And so in this way, Raghunath Das was able to make a beautiful 
place for meditation on the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. If we had to only think of the rice field as being Radha Kund, it wouldn't be quite the same. So we're so fortunate that this happened. So Raghunath Das, of course, he was very renounced. Actually, he had been given the instruction by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, Raghunath would never directly go to Mahaprabhu. He would ask Swarup Damodar. Swarup Damodar was the secretary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Raghunath Das, if he wanted to know anything, he would ask Swarup Damodar. And Swarup Damodar would then ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So one day it happened, Raghunath Das asked Swarup Damodar, what should be my behavior as a devotee? So Swarup Damodar then inquired from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he got the instruction from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu told him, never talk with the ordinary people and never hear what they're talking about, the, you know, the gramyakata, the gossip. Don't hear these things and don't talk these things. And never wear opulent dress and, and never eat opulent foodstuffs. Eat simply and dress also in a very... Because Raghunath does is taken, he's come to renounce. He's not, he's given up everything. He's taken the Babaji order, renounced life, where they wear the short dhoti around the legs and they simply have a few pieces of cloth. So Raghunath Das was given these important instructions by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that will always chant the holy name and worship Radha and Krishna in your heart. These were the instructions given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Raghunath and to all of the renounced devotees, devotees who have renounced to, in the service of Krishna, then these instructions are very important. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Anybody? Yes, Prabhu? Yes? Yes? Uh, I read an interesting article about Satibama. Uh, and uh, I mean, Satibama uh, is the partner of uh, Vishnu Sunya Devi is the partner of Satibama, the third partner of Krishna. Uh, now, in material, in spiritual world, everything is possible. Mango tree can give a coconut, coconut tree can give mango, everything is possible. In the uh, material world, nature of uh, law cannot be changed. Even Lord Krishna was served by Tantra and And uh, this Lord Krishna accepted and he followed the nature of law. Now, my question is, when Lord Chaitanya married such a uh, Vishnu Kriya he left mother and uh, both wife in went, he left uh, the other star. Is it for is it fair for Vishnu Kriya on this day? Because in material world every mother will have their own desire. And she was waiting for so many years for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come back. He didn't return. What is well, of course, he's not going to come back. <laughs> he took sannyas, right? You don't come back. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after he took sannyas, his mother came there to Shantipur and met him at Shantipur. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said to his mother, he said, I'm sorry that I took sannyas in the, uh, in the rush of a moment. I did it very rashly. I, I said, if you want, I will come back and live at home. 
But Sachimata said, oh no, please don't do that. That will be worse. He said, if you have to come back and give up after taking sannyasa and then you're going to come back, that will be worse. So now you've taken sannyas, you must keep the vow. But she requested him, you go to Puri, don't go to Vrindavan, so that in Puri we can get news from you. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understood the difficulty, but at the same time Mahaprabhu had his mission to achieve. The mission, if you stay at home, he could deliver his wife and mother. But if he leaves home, he could deliver the whole world. So what is better? You just want to deliver only your wife and mother? Or are you going to deliver the world? And so Mahaprabhu, to deliver the world, he renounced and left home. And mother and wife, there, and from the spiritual world, they will be reunited. When they leave the world, they'll be reunited again. So the separation is only temporary. When he wanted to leave home, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, don't be a Sahajya, go back and practice everything. But then later when he did renounce and he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that you have been freed, you are very fortunate, you have come out from this uh, well, deep dark well. So it's, I, it's, I mean how do I understand this properly? We should be trying to renounce, right? So could you explain that to me? Yes, well. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in, he, he wanted that it shouldn't be something premature. You have to, yes, the renunciation is encouraged, but it shouldn't just be on the rush of the moment, on the spur of the moment that, oh, here's Lord Chaitanya, no, oh, I should ask him, I want to go with him. You know, you, you have to consider the situation. Have you thought about it carefully? Are you actually ready to do that? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also instructing that, as I said, you don't go to Krishna directly, but you go through the devotee. So when Raghunath got the mercy of Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda is none different from Balarama, and Balarama is the original spiritual master. So when you get the mercy of the spiritual master, then you can get the mercy of Krishna. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, so he did not immediately tell him, you know, leave home. Mahaprabhu's teaching was stay in your situation. You know, the Brahmana, Brahmana Kurmakshetra, no, you don't come with me, you stay here. And so Mahaprabhu didn't like to change people abruptly, but in course of time, if they've actually prepared for that, then there's no harm. So Mahaprabhu was making sure that Raghunath, first of all, was prepared to do this. Now sometimes we see people want to renounce, but then after they renounce for some time, then they want to go back into the situation. They think, oh, I, you know, I made a mistake. I think I want to be in the family life. I don't think I should be renounced. And this happens a lot. So that's why within, even within our own society today that they're very cautious about allowing people to renounce because it creates a disturbance in society. So Mahaprabhu was also very careful that no premature renunciation. But if he's actually convinced that this is what he wants to do, then in course of time, then he accepted Raghunath. He saw his determination to get freed from his material situation. And so then he accepted him. 
Yes, Prima. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful narrations. Maharaj, I just come from Vrindavan two days ago. That's why I see I'm wearing this shirt. Vrindavan is very cold now. And uh, the inhabitants of Vrindavan are the most wonderful devotees of Lord Krishna, the brother Basis. Why Lord Krishna allow this part of the to be very cold so that people experience excessive cold? Why Lord Krishna allow it? We should ask Krishna. <laughs> He is the controller. Does he have to give a reason for everything? Krishna wants to show the tolerance of devotees, and that they will tolerate the heat and the cold. They can do devotional service in any situation. You think, oh, I can only serve Krishna if it's nice and warm. If it's cold, I can't do service to Krishna. It's not true. This marriage is from Russia. The devotees are serving Krishna there also. They go on Harinam in the snow. It's very cold. M minus 20, minus 30, minus 40. You've never experienced it. But the devotees are there. They're chanting and dancing. They're preaching. Krishna consciousness does not depend on any kind of material situation. We can serve Krishna in any conditions. Anyabilasita hmm? sunyam jnana karma janavritam. No, we don't, we're not worried whether it's hot or cold. It doesn't make a difference. Service to Krishna goes on everywhere. Ahai taki apriti hata. Yayatma Supresidati. Devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted. Don't worry about the heat. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, it's so cold. So what? That's the body, body concept of life. We're not the body. The body's hot. The soul is. You want. You, the soul is not affected by the heat or the cold. So we, Krishna wants us to give up that bodily concept of life. The weak-hearted devotees run away from the cold. And Prabhupada was staying there. Prabhupada was there. Prabhupada never complained. Rasa Prayana? Alright? Uh, uh. uh, can they receive Prema? In Shantaras, can they receive Prem? Yeah, I would think so, yes, why not? Chantaras devotees, people like the four Kumaras, Nanyagendras, Chantaras devotees, they could also be in print. It's possible. By the mercy of a Prima Bhakta, they can also get print. You have to get prem from a prema bhakta. If somebody who has prema, they can give it. So, if somebody is in Shantaras, certainly you can also give. Santaras means they simply appreciate the opulences of Krishna, but they're not actually engaged in service. And so, one can be in prema bhakta. One can also experience prema in Shantaras. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for the wonderful class.
Hare Krishna, all the attendants. Hare Krishna, Panchakarpatu, Yash Chakrupas, Hindu Vecha, Vitana, Pavani, Vyo, Vishnami, Vyo, Namona, Pasanta Pantaviki. A few announcements before that. Today is a deity call sponsored by Devi Kimataji and Radha Gopalananda flower dress sponsored by Chap Dev. Three Hari Bows to everyone. Hari Bow! Hari Bow! Hari Bow! Uh, following me, third Friday, every one of you know, is the appearance day of Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Trayadasi Ghi.